Well, good morning, folks, and welcome to, uh, I think it's day four of our tour here in beautiful Tussey. A little bit damp today, weather forecast not super duper, but uh, only light rain, so hopefully it'll be all right. But these spectacular views here at the villa never dampen our spirits. Check this out. Absolutely lovely. So uh, today, apparently, we're going to be travelling in what uh, Adrian reckons is some of the most beautiful areas of Tuscany. I've got the details. Let me tell you where we're going. Here we go. Today we're going to ride the Val d'Occia, apparently. Uh, rich, amazing landscapes. Probably the most beautiful area in Tuscany. Let's hope that uh, we get good views of it here today. Uh, we're off to Montalcino, where apparently the Brunello wine is from. Uh, then on to San Antimo, uh, Bagno Vignoni, which is famous for its thermal waters. And then we're on to Pienza. So it sounds like a great day. Apparently there is some amazing riding. So we're uh, going to get my kit on, get on the bike. Let's see what the day brings. So we're off for day four. And already we've uh, caught up with our first van of the day. I'm glad that it's not just the UK that uh, the roads are blighted with them. Although, to be fair, I think we've only seen two vans on the whole trip so far. So, no big deal. <laughs> and already we're into an absolutely cracking road once again. Switch the uh, RT into dynamic mode. Just holds on to the revs a little bit longer. I think today may be a day for rain mode, we shall see. I have to say, it's extremely unusual for it to, to be this wet in Tuscany at this time of year. I'm recording this in the middle of May, and Adrian was saying last week it was 27 degrees and sunny. <laughs> so it's just Murphy's Law, is it? That uh, the week that I come out to video, the clouds down, but hey ho, not much we can do about that. I have to say, the uh, the food that we've been served in the villa, we have our own uh, chef, and the food he's been cooking up has been absolutely amazing. Uh, I don't know how many of us there are in total, but there must be, you know, 15, 18, 20 of us, something like that. You saw how big the table was, and that's full of an evening. And there's just one chef and one helper, and uh, they cook up the most incredible meals every evening for us. About a five course meal, so we're absolutely stuffed by the time we go to bed. Now people often say, oh, can you record the meals? Well, I don't like to be sticking cameras in people's faces while they're eating, really, even though I may do it occasionally. So, uh, so sorry I've not shown you that, but take it from me, there is no lack of food on this tour. It's absolutely amazing. All healthy Mediterranean stuff as well, so uh, it's all good for you. Well, it makes me smile, so it must be good for me. OK, rain mode it is then. Maybe that's the last of dynamic I've seen today. <laughs> hey -ho. Well, all I can say is thank goodness for Gore-Tex. <laughs> if you ever wondered uh, about the kit that we wear on these trips and what do we uh, take along to make sure that we're good for all weathers, well, we wear Rucker kit. You can see Carol on the bike in front of me. The big R on our back, that's the uh, Rucker logo. And it is expensive kit, but it's made out of uh, Gore-Tex Pro, which is a laminated type of Gore-Tex. So, in other words, there's a couple of layers of Gore-Tex bonded to the outer of the garment which means that the uh, jacket and trousers themselves don't actually get saturated like jackets do that aren't laminated so if you're new to the world of motorcycling and you're thinking about what kit to buy and you see that there are cheaper bits of kit that have various layers that you take out waterproof layers thermal layers and so on they're fine to begin with but if you're doing more serious tourist um, touristing and touring look at this scenery by the way um, then do consider getting yourself some Gore-Tex Pro laminated kit because uh, it absolutely makes a difference. Not only does it keep your bone dry, even though it may look like I'm wet, I'm not, I'm actually completely dry in here. This stuff never gets defeated. You can get in a shower with this and you'll still be bone dry. Not only does it keep you dry, but it keeps you warm as well because it's completely windproof. So if you're uh, serious about your touring, could not recommend getting some uh, proper Gore-Tex Pro kit more. It's uh, it's an essential bit of uh, riding clobber, I think. So we're just climbing up into the walled town of Montalcino now. Amazing views off to my right. But uh, better concentrate on the hairpin. Looks like all our tour are present and created behind. Quite impressive <laughs> how we've all kept together. A lot thanks to Kiko doing his thing on uh, roundabouts and stopping the traffic for us. It's great that. Every tour should have one. I've never been here before. This is a new one on me. Looking forward to uh, seeing what it's got to offer us. Okay, so welcome to a, it has to be said, a little bit damp Montalcino. What an amazing looking place though. Check this out. A 
Looks pretty cool. Looks like Mrs. Flyer has pro come properly equipped. You have a brolly. There's an umbrella in the top box. In fact, there's two. What a bit. What a bit. <laughs> I just can't look what I found. Well prepared. I know. What it, a great ride that was. Oh, it was. It was beautiful. It was amazing. And the greenery and the poppies in the fields, stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. Right, I'm hoping this is a coffee stop, though. I think it must Feeling be. Feeling a little bit damp. Okay, so we're inside the, uh, the fortress now. Let's see if uh, Adrian knows anything about this. Adrian, what can you tell me about the fortress? So here we are in Montalcino. Yep. This is the famous fortress that uh, was the place that if the city was under attack, yep. uh, all the time, well, the, normally the children and the women, they came here. Uh, Why to is it be, always to women be and children? What's that all about? What about men? Old blokes. Uh, man, uh, time to fight and oh, mm -hmm. to that kill. Gives we, and that gives we, didn't, we, we weren't alive then. <laughs> and uh, there's a famous wine from here, isn't there? Yes, in Montalcino we have the Brunello di Montalcino, which is one of the best uh, red wines in Italy. Excellent. We won't be trying that today on the bikes, though. Tonight. Okay. Sounds good to me. <laughs> right, so the more adventurous of us have decided to come up onto the battlements of the fortress. Check this out. Actually, it stopped raining. Look at that. Look at that. The sun's coming out. Brilliant. Yes. Actually, check out these views of the top, off the top here. You won't be able to see them off the GoPro so well, I expect, but it's absolutely stunning up here. It's beautiful. So we stopped for a quick coffee in Montalcino town, and I'm glad to say the rain has now stopped. It would it be optimistic to say that the sun is coming up? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. But I think it would be. It's not raining. But not yeah. Drizzling. We'll take it. We'll take it. Okay, thank you Montelcino. What a beautiful little place. But definitely one for the list to come back to do on a sunny day. And enjoy some al fresco dining. Arrivederci Montalcino. Got there at a good time. The crowds are starting to turn up now. It's uh, the rain has kind of stopped. It's getting popular in there. Right, onwards. views here just keep on delivering what a stunning part of the world now the rain stopped dare I take you out of rain mode this road's looking quite dry isn't it maybe we will Check out this road, absolute corker.
Well, these views and these rides today have been pretty epic in my book. Adrian has sniffed us out some absolutely stupendous roads. It's been great fun. So we're just coming into the town of Bagno Vignoli, Vignoli now, uh, which is the town with the thermal springs. And this is where we're going to have our lunch stop. Amazing ride through, as I say, and it was uh, some lovely little towns we came through actually where I didn't have the camera on that looked really quite upmarket. So I'm guessing this is the posh end of Tuscany, or one of them anyway. Some beautiful towns and villages here, some lumbly villas. Looks like a sculpture of a heart in a cage there. Look at that, isn't that weird? How odd. some handy bike parking. Well lunch in that uh, restaurant was absolutely splendid, massive pizza. Forgot to take any uh, video or pictures of it once again though but uh, anyway come to have a little look in the town here. Particularly interested to see the uh, Roman bath that should be the town square. Let's have a look at this. Wow. You can actually see the steam coming off it at the back end. In fact, you probably can't see on the GoPro, but at the very far end of this uh, pool, you can actually see the water bubbling up. I guess that's where the spring is. I'll see if I can zoom in on my iPhone and uh, show you there. What a beautiful spot. Oh, what an amazing place. I've never seen anything quite like, well, I have. I've seen something like it at Bath, but uh, at home, if you have this, it's a massive tourist attraction here. It's just normal. There's something down here at the end of town that uh, Adrian also wants to show us, but I'm looking at the floor in front of me. The fact that there's these uh, manhole covers running along to the edge of town, I wonder if that's something to do with it. So, what are we looking at here then, Adrian? Here we have the Roman bath. Oh, wow. Very old Roman bath. Yep. Here we have the, the water running from the source over there. Yep. Temperature is like the body temperature. Yep. Very, very, very nice. And down there, you have the hot springs where you can actually go and have a bath. Well, uh, anyone in there now? Let's go and have a look. Uh, Fantastic. Yeah, this is quite something. Once again, in Bath, where there's a similar arrangement, all this would be mega tourist attraction here. It's just normal. Okay, and the bathing springs look to be just down here. I'll get my uh, iPhone out again and see if I can get you some uh, closer shots. But what a great place. And what a stunning setting for it as well. The scenery around here is just incredible. Well, what a great stop that was. Fascinating and interesting as well with the Roman baths there. Just uh, gathering the group up for our last ride of the day. Just a short hop to the final location. I can't quite remember what it is, but we'll find out soon enough. And the good news is, it looks like we've got dry roads for the uh, final ride of the day. Pienza. It makes you wonder just how many of these sort of towns Tuscany has. What an incredible place. Oh, what a handy bit of motorcycle parking. All right, so this is uh, the town of Pienza, which apparently is famous for its cheese, Pecorino di Pienza. I've had uh, Pecorino de Romana, apparently that's nowhere near as good. Anyway, we're going to go and check out a cheese shop. So uh, thank goodness it's not smell vision eh? So how many medieval towns can we do in a day, do you think? Quite a few. Yeah, it sounds out we can, doesn't it? So can you see the cheese shop is the question? No, but I can smell cheese. Can you? Yeah. Is that it, the cheese terrier just there? <laughs> Could be. So this is the cheese shop, apparently. It's quite cheesy smell here. I mean... Well, that's because it's cheesy, isn't it? Yeah, but I'm, the, Popular, the viewers can't smell it, but it really does smell very... Oh yeah, it does, it does. It has got a bit of a nose, isn't it? 
Yeah. In it, what type of language is that? Cheesy language. <laughs> Just get in there. Just get in there. Oh, <laughs> more than this mess. Oh my word. Oh. Oh, la, la. I like cheese, but I'm not sure I like it that much. <laughs> Do you like cheese that much? Very strong. Yeah. Oh, it's oh. very strong. I had this this dish on the restaurant. Oh, did you? Peachy cacio e pepe. Mm. Fantastic. Good. Well, was well it I hope it tastes better than it smells. I'm out of here. Oh. I like cheese, but not that much. Not that much. No. Yeah. Oh, geez. So I've realised that as we're in a villa and not in a hotel, we've not done the uh, daily show you round of the hotel room. So let's show you the room we've got in the villa. This is our room. All the rooms are fairly similar. Let's see if Mrs. Fly's at home. Hello there. Hi. Would you like the microphone to do the uh, tour? The answer's yes, I assume. A lovely bedroom. I mean, the, all the bedrooms, we had a look in a couple, are gorgeous. Wanted ceiling, very comfortable bed. Come on through, nice bathroom, lovely hot shower, lots of hot water. Cracker, isn't it? It is an absolute cracker. So, not too shabby, so uh, shower time, I think. Yes. Well, good morning once again, folks, and welcome back to the beautiful Villa El Aron here in uh, the Chianti region of Tuscany, where it has dawned an absolutely beautiful day. Look at the weather today. And have a great day of riding today. Yesterday, though, we had a day off riding. This um, trip is called the Total Tuscan Experience, and of course, Tuscany is all about uh, wine and food. So that really was what yesterday was about. It was a fantastic day. Uh, we visited a couple of wineries, did some wine tasting, learnt about how wine is produced. Not just wine, but also balsamic vinegar, olive oil at a local winery. It was fantastic. Great character showed us around, and we had some yet again amazing food there. Uh, and then when we came back, we had a bit of a relax here at the villa, and then we had a cookery lesson. We had a chef into the villa here uh, who is a real character and uh, he taught us all about Tuscan cooking. Uh, we had a go at some Tuscan cooking and then we ate our results for supper. It was absolutely brilliant, a great fun day and uh, just made a nice change to you know rest the bones after being on the bikes for a few days. Anyway today we're back on the bikes uh, and uh, we've got a good trip planned. We're going to be going out to Siena, uh, which is a town relatively close to here, so looking forward to looking around Siena. I think I might have been there in the past, but not too sure. I'm sure it'll come back to me. Then we're going on to an abbey called, uh, I think it's San Galgiano, uh, where we're going to be seeing where the real sword in the stone is, apparently. And it's a bit of a ride out towards the coast. Uh, some fantastic roads out to there, uh, where I think we're going to have a spot of lunch, and then a big ride back through some really twisty roads again. So really looking forward to uh, getting on the bike today. OK, so we are on the road again to Siena, and uh, we just stopped for some fuel. We fuel up once a day. So we could uh, the whole day's playing. And just look at this weather today, absolutely stunning out here. It's already 17 degrees, and it's only about 9.30 in the morning. This is much more akin to the sort of weather you would get in Tuscany. It's been uh, strange this week. I was watching the uh, BBC weather this morning, and they were saying in the last two weeks in Italy, they've had the rain equivalent of six months. So this is a very unusual situation we find ourselves in where we've had it so damp. But in fact, this weekend uh, was gonna be the Italian Formula One Grand Prix, but it's been canceled because they're expecting so much rain. So uh, there you go. Anyway, today's looking splendid. So we're really gonna to enjoy today. So in case you're wondering, this uh, region that we're riding through is the Chianti region. Famous, of course, for its Chianti wines, of which we tried plenty yesterday. Turns out that the key things for a nice Chianti is the weather, the soil, and love. And uh, well, they've got the soil and the love here this year, but uh, the experts that were showing us around the wineries were saying that uh, that uh, a drought basically then followed by deluges of rain is not good for the grapes. So I'm not sure that uh, 2023 is going to be a vintage Chianti year. Apparently if you want a decent bottle, you want to go 2018 or 2016, where they were pretty much perfect conditions and mixes of sunshine and rain. Pretty much perfect conditions on the bike today though. Dry roads and twisty too. Good for the soul.
bit of a view for Chianti. Punto Panoramico. Okay, splendid little uh, photo stop there at the Ponte Panoramico. A couple of snaps, potential thumbnail material maybe. Right, onwards. I've learnt in uh, riding in these twisties in the last few months that uh, second gear is the way to go off with these. He says, changing into third. But if you're in lots of hairpins, the engine braking you get in second on these boxer engine bikes is excellent and you basically can nip around without touching your brakes. Occasionally you might just tickle the rear brake to stabilise the bike but uh, it makes for quite smooth flowing riding. Well, it works for me anyway. Beautiful little town through here. This is, uh, I think it was Castellina in Chianti. Now to Italian eyes, it's just another little town probably, but to British eyes, they're just incredibly pretty. <laughs> Man, these roads around here are good. Adrian has given it loads now. I'm not going to attempt to keep up with him. He knows the roads like the back of his hands. in somebody else's bike. Want to be a little bit careful. Wow. Some pretty splendid looking villas around here. that was <laughs> quite something great fun well welcome to Siena we actually uh, I was gonna say we found somewhere to park but we've just basically stuck the bikes amongst these uh, scooters here look and then we're leaving the keys with uh, Kiko who's gonna hang around and if any of these bikes need to be moved then they can be moved whilst we go and have a bit of an explore around the town so that was quite a sporting ride to start the day, was it? Did you enjoy that? Yes, it was fantastic. Adrian was giving it quite a lot of lean, I could see. Oh, car coming. Yeah, 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 I oh, know, it was lovely. Was it fun? Oh, it was great fun, I really enjoyed it. Amazing amounts of grip on these bikes. Views were absolutely beautiful, it was a fantastic road. Yeah, yeah, really enjoyed that. Quite a sporting start to the day. Good job we didn't have any breakfast. Yeah, I didn't have any breakfast because I was too full from the dinner and chefing last night. Right, hopefully we'll find a coffee now though. Yes. Welcome to Siena. <laughs> this is the Piazza del Campo. This is the piazza, the square where every year they do the Palio di Siena, the famous horses race, uh, in the middle of the summer, in, in July, when it's really hot. So basically, the square becomes like a, like a circuit. Uh, so where we are standing here right now, in the gray part, is where the horses race, so all around the square. And in the middle, it's completely full of people, it's, uh, it's uh, something crazy, uh, waiting to see the race. Most of them, they don't see anything because they're like in the middle, you know, you, you don't see anything. Standing here for hours and hours and hours when it's really hot. So many of them, they have, you know, some issues. So the, the ambulance, they have uh, work during that uh, race. Um, and another way to see the race is to rent one of the terraces, one of the windows here on, on the square. Uh, so similar to, I don't know, to like Monte Carlo Formula One, Grand Prix, you know? So you can see there, you can, it's, it's expensive and you have a great view. It's always on the television also in, here in Italy and people watch it. In Tuscany, a lot of people watch for this. There is a curious thing about the, this race and this square is that uh, uh, the, all the, uh, the apartments with windows in the square, they have like everywhere, no? So there is a price per square meter and then for each window that faces to the square, 
the rule in Siena is that you have to uh, you have to add one million per window. So that's that's how they calculate these prices. If you want to win a window in Piazza del Campo, that's the price. Okay, thank you Sienna. Had a nice little mooch around there. Good look at the square, the Duomo and so on. Very nice. Now I think we've got a uh, civilised about a 40 minute ride up to our lunch stop. 20 degrees now, perfect riding weather. Great to see so many two wheeled vehicles around. Obviously mostly scooters but uh, Italy, like Spain, runs on motorcycles, particularly in the towns. It's definitely part of the congestion solution, isn't it? If you live in a country with uh, weather that's conducive to it. So two bits of bad news. One, it started raining, which definitely wasn't the forecast. And two, we're stuck behind this white van. Ah, seems like Tuscan is more like home than I thought. So welcome folks to San Galgano. There's an abbey here, just there. Hope you can see that with the, uh, with the GoPro. Uh, it's a little bit damp, uh, but it's called San Galgano because years ago there was a knight. It actually was called Galgano. He was born in a town on the top of the uh, mountain over there. I don't know if you can see that with the GoPro. And uh, anyway, he went off to the Crusades and fought, killed people, all that sort of nasty business. He came back here and kind of repented. He built the abbey, uh, and as a sign to show that he was no longer going to be a knight, he stuck his sword into a stone to show that he was giving up all that caper. Anyway, as a result of that, he became a monk and uh, later on became a saint. So there's hope for us all. Anyway, we're going to have a bite to eat here. Then we're going to apparently go and see the actual stone that he stuck the sword in. So that'll be good. Well, we had an absolutely excellent lunch in there. I thoroughly recommend it if you're ever in the area. The food here has been absolutely superb wherever we've uh, gone. It's been great. Uh, and there was no exception. And I'm glad to say the rain has packed up. Here comes Mrs. Flyer. So, uh, thumbs up for the food on that oh, one? Oh, it was amazing food. It was beautiful. Sadly, forgot to film it. And uh, again, I don't really want to ram my camera in people's faces while they're eating. But the food overall on this trip, everywhere has been it's, great, has it? has been exceptional. Yeah, but yeah. this place... Really nice. Marvellous. Nice and warm now as well. Yeah. And a lot of lovely building actually, I've just noticed. Lovely spot. Right, onto a bit of culture then. And uh, Abbey, etc. Alright, so we walked up to this uh, newer part of the Abbey, which is where I suspect the uh, stone with the sword in it is. We're going to have a look. Apparently, somebody tried to steal the uh, sword out of the stone once and uh, broke the sword. Uh, and as a result, had their arms chopped off. And apparently, you can see their arms in here as well. So, that's very nice. Absolutely excellent little lunch stop there at the Abbey. Once again, some fantastic food. And <laughs> quite interesting seeing the uh, the sword in the stone there and the chopped off arms. I hope you got to see those on the uh, GoPro shots I took. It was very dark in there and it was all very silent, so uh, couldn't explain it at the time, but hopefully it was uh, self explanatory. It's warmed up again, it's uh, 22 degrees centigrade now, and uh, hopefully. We've seen the last of that drizzly weather. I'll pop the bike into dynamic mode in the hope that we do, and none of us have put our waterproofs on. Plus, I've put my sunglasses back on, so actually all the omens are there for it to actually rain, so <laughs> we'll see what happens. I have to say this tour is very civilised. You know, it's an hour or so's riding and then a stop somewhere interesting for a look round. Cup of coffee, another hour or so's riding, stop for lunch look round, another hour or so's riding, stop somewhere. It's, uh, you know, the pace is just right for me. Obviously, depends what you like with your riding, but uh, I'm quite happy to be doing that. So we're not covering massive miles, and we're not on the bike for hours and hours on end. It's just, uh, well, what's I say, very civilized.
So I've popped the bike back into dynamic mode. With uh, Paul's help, I've managed to get the uh, fuel gauge up so I can see at last how much fuel we've got on board. Don't know my way around these uh, TFTs as well as I should have done on my GS. I haven't got the TFT, I'm old school with mine still, so uh, it's all a learning thing. But I have to say, I I've really kind of gelled with the bike over the week. There's nothing I don't like about it. It's a really nice machine for this sort of thing. Weather protection is brilliant and it doesn't feel unbelievably heavy. Of course, I'm only riding one up, so I'm cheating a little bit. But you know, arguably, it's kind of best of both worlds between my GS and my Goldwing. I can see why these uh, constantly win the sort of touring bike shootouts in the magazines and so on. It is a lovely bit of kit. I suppose the only downside with it over the GS is maybe, weirdly, it's not quite as comfortable in the leg because on the GS you're a little bit, your legs a little bit straighter. Other than that, if you've got no intention of uh, ever going off road, then definitely consider the RT over the GS. Ooh, dry roads, excellent. Cue the music. So welcome to a place called Massa Maritima. And to say that was a sporting ride in here <laughs> is somewhat underselling it. It was, uh, it was pretty, pretty fun is all I can say. So I thought I'd read the blurb that Adrian provided me about today. It says here, our last visit of the day will be through an exciting road to Massa Maritima. Exciting, it certainly was. So Carol, Adrian uh, described that as an exciting road. How would you describe that? It's fab, it's exciting. Would you like to get any faster? If I could work up to it, probably. <laughs> I wouldn't want to go any faster, and I was on my own. So we just walked to the edge of town. There's a view across here. You possibly can't see it with a GoPro, so I'll get the, uh, the iPhone out and do a bit. But that, you can see an island just in the uh, distance there. That actually is the island of Elba, which I think, uh, I think maybe something to do with Napoleon. Was he incarcerated there, something like that? Anyway, we made it to the seaside at least. So that was a whistle-stop visit to Massa Maritima. We had a, uh, an ice cream there, and whilst we were inside having an ice cream started around again so that's a bit of a pain so anyway that's it really for today it's just a black back to the villa now it's about an hour ride which looks like it's going to be in the rain so i'll catch up with you anon right so after a uh, long down the bikes there's nothing more appropriate than a beer i would say would you not agree paul totally and uh from a food point of view what would be the best possible food we could have now uh, how about a steak on a barbecue i think that would be excellent that's would you concur <laughs> oh, excuse me a steak would be very good it would wouldn't it, it would. should it we go and see if they're coming along they're changed with pasta Are you saying you don't like pasta i like pasta but you know only so much you can eat last night jim cooked for us so uh anything's going to be an improvement I, i'll tell you about it last night was very good the food that you did jim in particular <laughs> was top quality. Excellent, thank you. And it takes must a lot be of mine. skill rolling out that we all, door, you know. Well, we all learned something, didn't we? It wasn't even door, just, it was pasta, sorry. No, no. That shows you what well, yeah, well, well, Excellent. It was, uh, what, uh, what else did we have? We had uh, chicken. Chicken? Didn't agree with the washing thing though, did you? No, not necessarily. We just have a washing chicken. Absolutely not. No. But he bit, said to but trust I, chef, but I, bet, but I bit my tongue. I None of us are dead tongue. though, are we? So. Well, you know, there is an incubation period. Is there? How long? Ooh, 24, 48 hours. So it's we're not in the tomorrow, clear yet then? Tomorrow could tell a tale. <laughs> oh, On, only saying. Look at those beauties. How long will you give them? 30 minutes? Five yes, minutes? 30 minutes. 30 minutes, right? Yes. Right, wow. Well. 30 like this, 7 like this, and 7 like this. Ah, okay, perfect. Wow. Already smells good, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. No, it does. 
He does, yes. Go to um, Elba Island, Isola d'Elba, do you know? It's a little, a little island in Tuscany. Yes. Yeah, we saw it just now. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yep. We, we go every year, the first weeks of June, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and he always cook for everybody. We are 15. Oh, yeah. yeah. Always nice. fish and fish and fish and fish. <laughs> we are really happy. <laughs> I, I love fish too. <laughs> Has he done steak before? What? Has he done steak before? Yeah. Good. Yeah, good, good, yeah, good, good, good. sure. <laughs> yeah. Just thought I should check. <laughs>
So possibly one of our favourite restaurants of the trip. If you ever come to Cortona, then uh, definitely check out Tonino Restaurant. Amazing view, amazing food and amazing staff. Very, very nice. Right, let's go and have a look around town then, yeah. shall we? Thank you Cortona, what an excellent final stop on our total Tuscany experience tour. It's been absolutely cracking here, amazing restaurant, amazing views, incredible food. My apologies to Sandy for keep saying amazing, which apparently I do a lot, but it was fitting, it was a, a lovely spot. So all we've got now is a black back about an hour and a half on the motorway to the villa and then we're done so that's it for our total tussling experience it's been an incredible week on the bike it's been absolutely great i've done a few of these tours now and for me i think it's one of the best tours we've done what do you think yeah i really enjoyed staying in one place coming home to the same bed not having to pack up every night it was a great treat and it really was a total Tuscan experience yes. in that it wasn't just about biking, but also very much about food and yes. wine. <laughs> a lot of food, yep. excellent food, unbelievable food. Even though the weather wasn't kind to us with no. the worst rain in Italy for umpteen years, uh, we, it was still amazing. Yeah, I've had a great time. And we met some great people, um, great riding, great roads, great bikes, great organisation. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Now, in terms of people often ask us, what do these things cost? Well, this particular tour, it ranges, I'll put details on the website below, so check that out, but it ranges from €3,400 to €6,000, depending on what you do and how you do it. Um, but we've done a little bit of a poll, haven't we, of people here that have been on the tour to ask if they thought it was good value for money. Yes. Obviously, good value for money means different things to different people. However, um, somebody said it's not cheap but you do get a lot for your money so breakfast lunch and dinner included your bike hire this amazing villa which is pristine throughout the chef the staff the experiences the, the experiences the wine, the tasting, wine we did, tasting the cookery course, the cookery course. Mm. Uh, we pay for coffee fuel and uh, tolls and tolls but, and i think e evening drinks but to be honest that was negligible and yeah. uh, if you think of it as like an all-inclusive or if you compare it to any other activity holiday like i don't know skiing or something it's comparable in price so yes. for me personally i think it's pretty good value yeah and we use budget airlines from the uk and ireland to get here yeah, which yeah. is very handy so overall from us a thumbs up very yeah. well organized very enjoyable cannot wait to do another tour like it again so thank you very much if you stuck around and watched the whole tour we'll see you again on another tour soon